I really enjoy my role because it's changed so much, but I've been allowed to make my role grow. Um, and so that's what I really enjoy about working at Sky, is when I say, is that come to Sky, you've got lots of opportunities to grow um, and to change. You, you know, you can adapt your career to whatever it is you want to do. I needed a way into technology with a fine art degree background, which is not easy. And so um, I discovered the Technology Graduate Scheme. They accepted uh, graduates with any degree discipline. So I thought I've got a shot. I went for the interviews and got the role. And my tech journey started from there in earnest because I had the backing of Sky. While Sky is dynamic and fast-paced, it's also very collaborative and inclusive. Um, it's, it's fun working at Sky. Um, there's always new ideas, new opportunities uh, that you can try out. Uh, personally, from a career progression perspective, um, I've been able to try out many different roles and grow as an engineer, grow as a person, and I'm constantly learning all the time. Working at Sky, for sure you, you don't get bored. The payoff of the Sky brand that is a believing back to really summarize what it's like uh, working in Sky. This continuous tension to improve things, to improve things for our customer, to improve things for our people. It's incredible, it's still very much like the first day. It's, it's, uh, Sky is very dynamic, it keeps moving. The, the, there are no two years alike, really. It's very inspiring, it's exciting, it's fun. It's, it's very inclusive as well, which, which matters a lot to me. As a woman of color, um, that's one thing I'm really focusing on in terms of like, when I was coming up, there wasn't anybody that I could see um, that I could say, oh great, I want to be like that person. And so it's me, I'm kind of like, okay, I want to be that for someone else. And I want to kind of create the space so that, you know, people can say, you know what, I can be that next leader, I can be that next person. I can be a woman in technology, or I can be a person of color, and, or I can be young, you know, there's an all kind of spectrum of, um, of what that could look like. I joined Sky in 2020, a few weeks before the pandemic. My first impressions were, you know, it's obviously a massive company, um, but also that the people were just really lovely. Sky is just such a great employer, honestly. I think um, really happy at Sky, and I really get why people stay at Sky for a really long time and grow their career. Technology doesn't always mean coding. There are many other different roles in technology. So there's many different opportunities and avenues that women can actually try out. So it's, there's nothing to be scared of. And also showing that there are so many women already working here and we are really thriving and, and supporting each other in um, getting more talent into technology. Sky is amazing. It's a really um, welcoming, diverse, embracing company and it really supports you. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. and. Um, I mean, gosh, how privileged are we? Our, our office is like Disneyland. The people are amazing. They're clever, they care, they empower, and they genuinely want to see you do well and help you to do well. And I think the other part of working at Sky is it's, it, there's always innovation in the air and you can't help but be excited by it. I'm Claudia Hossein Safwa, the Group Director for People, Talent and DNI across Sky. Thank you for being here today. So this spotlight session is all about Sky's approach in widening our talent pool within the tech industry. At Sky, we believe in better, but we know that better doesn't happen by itself. It's really driven by our people. And that's why we've got a fundamental belief that people are our most important asset. We're committed to widening the pool for three reasons. One, because we just want to make a positive impact more broadly but also because we know it's important and better to, for Sky to have a workforce that reflects our workforce, um, sorry, our, our customer base. And thirdly, we know that a diverse workforce not only leads to agility, but also creates a culture of innovation, which ultimately me leads to better business outcomes. But it's not just about visible diversity, it's also about diversity of thought. So if you think about the benefits of the melting pot of cultures, backgrounds, perspective, experiences, coming together to share ideas. Now we know that innovation is at the heart of what we do at Sky, we don't make any bones about that. But to, for innovation to thrive, it needs to be an environment where people can challenge the status quo, really be able to go against the grain and ultimately feel empowered and included. So I'm gonna share with you a VT from my colleague, Sharon Wallace, who is the head of DNI within the technology team. And she's gonna talk you through why inclusivity is important to us at Sky.
Inclusion is about everybody getting a chance to be heard, everybody getting the same opportunities. We're being equitable in our approach and we'll build an environment where everybody can thrive and flourish. Across the tech teams at Sky, we have a lot of activity going on at the moment with regards to how we build this inclusive environment. We have the Lift As We Climb initiative with IBM and Vodafone when we're supporting senior women in leadership in technology. We have the inclusive learning modules that we are trying to roll out across um, the broader sky. We have a lot of initiatives uh, with regards to mentoring, support, and how we build that better environment where everybody feels they belong and where everybody feels they can really thrive. At Sky, we want to build and design products and services that are available for everyone. So therefore, we want a variety of experiences and background and in our decision making, in our creation, in our ideation. My favourite story in the DNI world is one about Bletchley Park uh, up in Milton Keynes. Back in World War II, that's where the code breakers were based. They had a team of the top mathematicians from the top universities and they couldn't seem to break the Enigma code. But what they did was they put a crossword puzzle in a newspaper and they said, if you solve this, you've won a prize, contact us. What they did there was they ended up recruiting a team of code breakers who did go on to break Enigma. And they were men and women from a variety of backgrounds. There was professors of philosophy there. There was a Jewish woman. There was a German man. There were so many people from so many different backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, from uh, different experiences, academic and otherwise. And together, they came together into this wonderful, inclusive environment and solved Enigma. That is what inclusion can do, by bringing the people in and giving them an environment where they can really flourish. So we know the tech industry has a long way to go, but there are grounds of optimism. So if I introduce our first speaker, six years ago, he had no idea how he was going to get into technology and even specifically the media industry. And now I'm pleased to say he's one of our rising stars, and I will look at my notes to read this. This year, he won the Royal Television Society prestigious Young Technologist of the Year Award. Please welcome Jarrell Wright, our user support specialist at Sky. Hi, Jarrell, how are you? Hey, uh, I'm good, thank you, how are you? Good, nice to see you. We just discovered we're both from South London, so yeah, we've got a little common interest there. Good, in, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on your achievement. Thank you. Can you tell us about your journey so far in tech? Um, from when it started? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right from the beginning. Um, so I was at the job centre, um, didn't really have no direction in where my life was going. So um, I had a really good work coach called Esther, and I told her I wanted to do something in media. And she presented me three leaflets, and one of them was the Mama Youth Project um, scheme. So I read through it, I thought it was interesting, and I applied for it. And then from that, applications pretty much brought me to where I am today. So. And, what has, and I'll say, for, for you, those of you that don't, don't know, Mama Youth is a, an organisation that trains young people from underrepresented groups and helps them carve out a career within the media industry. So that's, they've been a part of the sky for a while now. Thanks for sharing. So what has been your biggest learning so far? Um, just how many different job roles there are in television, media, technology, and um, how many different processes there are to achieve an outcome. So one company might create a television show a certain way compared to another company, but you still achieve the same outcome by doing loads of different things. So mm. I think that, yeah. And what has been the big biggest surprise in terms of technology? Um, just how I've grown up from putting like a video into the video player or a CD into the CD player to just everything streaming now. Mm. You can just pick up your mobile phone, watch a movie, listen to music. So I think that jump in technology has been really big, yeah. And if you were to give advice to someone in your position, say, you know, starting out in their career, what advice would you give them? Keep learning. I think in technology, everything's always changing. So if you're learning, you're always going to be on top of the curve. So I would say, yeah, just keep on top of learning. And yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So how would you describe the uh, culture at Sky? I mean, we obviously heard from some of our uh, technology employees today, but I'd love to hear it in your words. What, what do you mean by a culture? Like just what it's like to work at Sky. Um, I didn't go to university, so I kind of liken it, and I haven't even really seen a university, but I just think it's like a university campus kind of thing in terms of you're going from building to building to do certain different things. Um, in terms of culture, I think it's diverse in that I've met people that I don't think I would have met just being on the road or through my friends and things, so mm. I think, yeah. And uh, what would you say to the lady that recommended Mama Youth to you? I understand you're still in contact, so... Yeah, you know definitely. Six years later. Always praises and thanks to her. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's changed my life. It hasn't kind of, yeah, it's changed my life, really, so, yeah. Mm. And last one for me before we move on to Conrad. Uh, so what's the future for you? Where would you, I guess, where would you see yourself in the next five years? It's uh, not an interview, by the way, but just keen to understand. <laughs> if, if it was that way... I know, it's um, such a standard question. So you can clearly see I'm in HR. Um, um, yeah, it's right. I don't really know how to answer those kind of questions. Um, like I said, as long as I'm learning, learning, I should be on top of whatever it is to come, so... And hopefully still at Sky. No pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jarrell. Thank right. you. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce Conrad. He is our Head of Emerging Talent and Head of Software Engineering Academy at Sky. So welcome to the stage. So we've obviously Patience. heard about <laughs> Jarrell's journey into Sky, but we yeah. know that there's many different schemes that we have. Some are award-winning, so I'd love you to be able to share with the audience today a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I run the Software Engineering Academy at Sky, uh, and pretty much my job is to encourage people uh, to start a career in technology um, and hopefully come and join one of our schemes, and then to develop them throughout their early years at, uh, at Sky and in, uh, in technology. So the academy itself is uh, divided into three key pillars. Um, we have pre-entry level, um, which is where we are pretty much out there talking about Sky and uh, all of the great things that we, uh, that we do here. But one of the key things that we do in, uh, in this particular pillar is something called Get Into Tech. Um, and originally that was aimed at uh, encouraging women from any background uh, to consider a career in technology. Um, and uh, we started that in, uh, in 2016. Um, and uh, we've been running it every year uh, since. And over the years, we've brought th over 300 women through that course, and a third of them are here at Sky today um, as practicing software engineers. And we've expanded the Get Into Tech scheme um, by uh, offering it uh, through a series of reskilling opportunities to people across uh, Sky that aren't necessarily in technology, but would like to know more, uh, and giving them the means then to come and start a career with us if they, uh, if they want to. And what the scheme promises to do is develop them to a point where they are then able to apply for entry-level roles in technology. So that moves on then to the second pillar, which is all about entry-level. Um, and uh, that's where all of my graduate schemes sit and all my apprenticeships and summer placements uh, and what have you. And we have a number of different routes that, that we use, but broadly speaking, it's divided into a technical track, um, uh, which is where we get our software developers from and DevOps engineers and reliability engineers and automated testers. And then we have a more business-related track, which uh, normally we get our project managers, scrum masters, uh, analysts from and what have you. So if you're coming to, uh, to, to technology, um, we can offer you a wide range of different opportunities across the whole of our, uh, whole of our estate. And then finally, post entry level, this is what happens when people are already in the business with us. How do we develop them? How do we, uh, how do we progress them into, uh, into bigger roles across, uh, across technology? Because if you imagine that we're bringing all this great entry level talent into the organization, but we don't want them to reach a point where they can't go any further. So we have to give careful thought in terms of how we progress people into bigger roles across the, uh, across the technology organization. Um, so we have a number of uh, training routes that enable us to do that, a number of, uh, a number of live experiences. Again, we have um, uh, additional schemes that people can enroll on where if they need to develop further skills to further their career or even move to a different area of the business 
where they are then able then to, uh, to practice a different technology stack, perhaps. We can enable them to, uh, to do that. Um, and if we've got people that have come through the, these routes um, and they don't have uh, you know, computer science degrees or, or what have you, um, because uh, like Hannah was saying on the, on the VT there, um, she was from a fine art background. Um, we have many people that come from different backgrounds um, uh, and we've never not been able to turn them into successful engineers. But if you want those qualifications, you can study with us um, and you can study up to a master's degree whilst you're in the business um, working in your delivery team. So what I'm able to do is I can take someone that's never written a line of code before, I can bring them through getting to tech, I can bring them through an entry level scheme, I can get them into delivery teams, I can get them progressing into medium roles, senior roles, I can get them to a point where they've got their computer science degree and master's degree and I can do that in around about three years. Thank you. I hope that was okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and just bearing in mind that you're working with people that don't have a view on tech because they're early on in their career, what are some of the misconceptions that you hear about the technology world? So, so I, 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 think, I, I think when I talk to people, particularly people that have never been um, you know, involved in technology, it's kind of seen as this, this, as this mystic art. Mm. Um, so, so we have to do a lot of work in terms of breaking down those, uh, those barriers. Um, and uh, essentially, this is one of the things that I think does need more work mm. in terms of how do, we, how do we bring those curtains down a little bit? How do we um, demystify what technology is about? Um, and, you know, looking at people that from, you know, different area, different walks of life, perhaps you're in HR, perhaps you're in marketing, um, you have skills that will help you with a technology career. We've just got to show you how you can apply them. Mm. And you talked to quite a lot, a lot of schemes there, so it might be hard to choose, but which one are you most proud of? Um, I've got to say I am proud of the Get Into Tech um, uh, scheme. Um, it was something at, at the time which um, hadn't really been tried before. Um, it was one of those situations when we kind of all sat around a meeting table trying to, trying to work out what the scheme could look like. And first question was, you know, where are we going to fish? Where, 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 where are we going to look? Because we can't look in the current technology pools because we already know that there's a, a chronic shortage of women in, in, in those spaces. So it was kind of like saying we want to go and fish in sectors that, that we've never, ever been in before. Uh, and um, I think we were, you know, you know successful even our, in our first year of bringing people in from you know, non-technology backgrounds who, you know, just had the drive and the passion to, uh, to you know, to want to learn to write software. Um, and, uh, and, and then the following year, we had people rolling off those schemes into, into sky rolls and, uh, and in delivery teams. Great, thank you. So we'll welcome Nishi Lau, who's our head of young people at Sky. Can you tell us about the amazing work with Sky Up and Academy Studios? Yeah, so thank you, um, Claudia. Um, so I have probably the most incredible job at Sky. Um, over the past 10 years, I've had the opportunity to inspire the next generation to build their skills as part of Sky Up is to give them access, opportunities so that they can have a better future. And that involves our immersive experience here at Sky um, on site. So that's uh, for 18 to 16 year olds to create their very own pieces of content. They create the stories, they write script and actually get hands on with technology. And they're able to then create their own news reports or their short story trailers. Since launching, and I must say today is a very important day, as well as the Tech Summit, we are actually officially 10 years old today. Oh. We had broad meet. <laughs> We had our first primary school walk through the doors. Um, 165,000 kids have physically been through our doors for the experience, which is actually phenomenal. Um, we've heard your real story about when you went to the job center. What our experience allows young people to do is get behind the scenes of TV, learn about the different roles that are available in the creative industries by doing the roles themselves as part of the experience. They are the editors, they are the camera operators, they are the producers, directors, and the presenters. They get to leave with their very own short story or their news report. Teachers have found the experience as a way to bring to life sometimes some often difficult subjects in the classroom, so whether that's from cyberbullying or that's from sort of self-image, um, and also kind of educating them around sort of important topics like the climate. Um, 
<laughs> students are able to kind of work as teams, so building those all important teamwork skills, communication, collaboration, developing all of those um, in the short space of time that they have with us. And yes, it does happen. And from my evaluation reports, you know, 97% of teachers are saying it's had a positive impact on them. It's built their confidence and actually given them the opportunity to think about what they might do next. Um, we know that from the stories um, that teachers have told us, the students, so you still hear through the corridor as they leave, this was the best school trip ever. <laughs> um, and if I could bottle that, the amount of times I've heard that, um, it would be just wonderful. Um, but we know that we inspired them to take the next steps in their academic journey, but also their careers. Mm. So we had a young girl called Darren, um, who I kind of serendipity met during lockdown. Um, and she was doing fashion PR. She changed direction and came to me for some advice. And at the time when I was speaking with her, she didn't realize that I ran Academy Studios. I hadn't realized as a year eight student, she had come to the experience. She said that it was coming to Sky and seeing the environment and seeing how TV was being made and having the experience that helped her take the next steps. She went on to become the first female black presenter for Formula E, which is absolutely phenomenal. There's also a young man called Brandon who came as a year nine student with his school and is now working at Sky as a virtual production software engineer, uh, which is again, testament to the experience and how we've been able to impact those young people to make fundamental decisions about what they might want to do, whether that's in the world of tech, the creative industries, or take that next big step for them. And we've heard Jill's story and all the great work that, you know, Conrad is doing in terms of t the technology. And, you know, we want to do more. Um, and we realize that Academy Studios, as brilliant as it is, also had barriers to participation. You know, being able to reach those students that we can't because of the travel distance or they can't afford to. So we decided to take the Academy Studios on tour. So this year in June, we launched on tour. We started in Ipswich, um, where we were able to engage 4,000 young students, um, give them agency to talk again about the things that they care, they care about um, around climate change. Um, it's been received incredibly well. Um, we are off to Bradford next week, and we will be traveling around the country. Um, it's been hugely successful, and I think what will help to bring it to life if we show you a short BT. Sky Up Academy Studios on tour finally hits the road. Our first host school is Ipswich Academy, able to bring this immersive experience to the students here, develop their digital skills and share stories about the things that they care about. Sky Up represents our mission to unlock possibilities in a digital world so that individuals from all backgrounds have the resources, skills and opportunities to create a better future. Using a pop-up photography studio or a high-tech digital media suite inside an e-vehicle to give young people from all backgrounds access to a creative studio. Just seeing the students um, in their work engaged, working with the Sky Ambassadors, they'll go home today, they'll tell their parents, their carers, their brothers and sisters about what they've done today. The impact that that's going to have on our students is very hard to put into words. And I think when you've been able to spark the imagination of a young person, no matter what they do next, is something that will stay with them forever. The biggest impact will be when these students go home tonight with their lanyards, the job role that they, they held, and then also the products that they've got, the cards, to look at the different possibilities within Sky and really open up those doors. The future of young people is in our hands today, and our future will be in their hands tomorrow. Sky Up Academy Studios on tour. So it'd be good for the audience to hear, is this work with young people unique just to the media industry? Um, there's some great work that's been done with young people out there and there's some great experiences that many organisations that are running and, and have done for a number of years. But I'm yet to come across an organisation that is bringing young people into the heart of their headquarters to deliver them experience Monday to Friday, 60 kids a day, all through the year, throughout the summer, and giving them the opportunity um, so 
there is no experience like that. And there are two Ducato vans out in this country, and I have two of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there isn't this experience going out to schools. Um, it's been a unique experience in every way. Mm. And I think, you know, to, to be able to do this, to also then create an employable generation. Um, we had a young person, Ipswich, say, you know, to us to say, I can go home and tell my mum today that editing is a real job. Um, it's not just something I do on YouTube. Editors do exist. <laughs> and that's what's unique to this experience. That's what we bring, and that's what we're able to do um, to create um, the future employees of the industry. Great, fantastic, thank you. And last but not least, we've got Carrie Wooten, who's the <coughs> Managing Director of RISE. <laughs> Get on the chair. <laughs> Hi. 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 The first question is, can you tell everyone about RISE? Yes, so RISE is an organisation that's looking to achieve gender diversity within the media technology industry. But importantly, what we've got is our RISE Up Academy, which is trying to achieve diversity more broadly within the media technology industry and also to look at the skills crisis that we're currently facing across the sector. And what we're really trying to do is to inspire and educate and inform young people very much like Nishi has been talking about with the Sky Up Academy programme about the opportunities and pathways that there are available in the industry. We know, we know particularly in technology roles and particularly kind of in those traditional engineering roles that we've got a older white male workforce mm. and we know that universities, particularly in these engineering subjects, are struggling to recruit those students. So we're really trying to get in from you know, students from eight to nine years old right through to 18 year olds to try and inspire them about those pathways. And, and as kind of everybody's reflected on the panel so far, we're, it's really clear that we're, as an industry, we're not getting the message out there enough about the breadth of opportunities that there are within our sector and that, you know, as your VTs have really explicitly said, we need that culture, we need that diversity of thought. And, and if we don't have that, we're going to struggle to, you know, maintain the best in the world within the companies that we we all represent here in the UK. So um, there's lots of work still to be done and that's, and, you know, that's really reflected through the companies that we speak to and the, the discussions that are happening. And I think particularly around the skills crisis that is mm. happening, you know, it's the only subject I hear at the moment is how people are struggling to recruit diverse talent and also t talent broadly. Just there isn't that, there isn't that breadth of people coming through. So that's what the Rise Up Academy is really trying to do. And this summer we had our first ever summer school okay. where we had 500 young people come through. Uh, so we had, so it was two days each. So it was 11 to, four, I'm just trying to remember now, 11 to 14 year olds for two days and then 15 to 18 year olds for the second two days. And they got to experience eight different workshops. So they got to build a four camera studio and gallery from scratch. They had virtual production, graphics, cloud technology, post-production. And I was just saying before this session, actually, that um, on the feedback forms, one of the students wrote on one of the sessions, this is the most boring thing ever. I really didn't like it. And then another student went, oh, my God, this is incredible. And I was like, brilliant. Yeah. Because that's exactly what we need to do is to try and allow young people to understand. As Jareel said, like, there's so many opportunities within organisations like Sky and other companies across the sector. But as a young person to understand, actually, post-production is not for me, but actually virtual production might be. Or, or that actually an OB opportunity might be for me, and I want to be a sound engineer. But we... We've struggled to date, I think, to get that message through to young people. And um, hopefully we did that with the, with the summer school. And um, the feedback we had was incredible. We had over 100 volunteers from across the industry, over 40 companies involved. And, um, and I've got a short VT to demonstrate as well. So it'd be great if we could show you that. Thank you. Good. OK, sound on W. So the Rise Up Academy Summer School is running for a week at Global Academy in Hayes and we're reaching out to 500 young people. We've got 11 to 14 year olds for two days and then 15 to 18 year olds for another two days. We are trying to inspire and educate and inform them about all the different opportunities there are in the media technology industry. Sound supervisor running the sound. Camera operator. Graphics operator. Voiceover. over. teaching operators. Five young people here who are trying out post-production, VFX, uh, graphics, an OB truck outside, build a full camera studio and a whole lot more, um, hoping that we can inspire, educate and inform them in the opportunities that could exist for them. We've got 
got all of these amazing, incredible opportunities for these young people to really understand where their interests might lie. It might be that they're interested in being involved in OBs, or it might be that they're, they're thinking about virtual production, but we're giving them the chance to understand what these technologies involve from a practical point of view and where their careers might go. So in the next five years, if you think about the context of this work, where would you like to see the industry? Oh, goodness. Next five years, mm. I'd like to see that breadth of talent coming through. I think there's, there's something around that post-18 pathway. So I'd like to see that post-18 pathway be a little more really clear for young people. Universities are an amazing route for coming into the industry, but they're not for everybody. And actually, mm. if we want diverse talent coming through, I think we need to look at what that that post-18 pathway looks like, and T-levels are something that we're working quite closely on. So I'd like that to be established, the T-level programme, having that really clear pathway going, if you want to be in this industry, then this is your role, this is your step, this is your step, this is your step, this is your step, and being, that being really clear and working, and from a Rise Up perspective, being really clear and working collaboratively and collectively with the, the whole of the industry to make sure that we're achieving the diversity that we want to see in the, in the industry. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll move into Q&A now. So if anybody's got any questions, I think they've put the Slido um, directions on, on the screen there. We've spoken a lot today about growing our own talent, essentially, uh, which has been some incredible work that's taken place, obviously, within RISE and also at Sky. What do you think else we could be doing to widen the talent pool to, pool to gain that attraction more externally? And I'll go to you, Conrad, for that one. So, so it, by being brave... I think is the is, is a word like I say when we were when we were designing uh, getting to tech and thinking about how that was going to work. You know, I can remember having the conversations in terms of what do you mean you're going to go into the financial sector and, and look for software engineers <laughs> and that have never done software development. What do you mean you're going to go to HR and what have you? But that is the way forward um, to you know to look at the pools that that, that you wouldn't expect to get uh, to get technology talent from. But just bear in mind that if you if you go that way, it is a lot of work, um, you know, to, to you know to bring people in, into the business and develop them. They won't be able to go into teams immediately, yeah. but they will absolutely give you a hundred percent, and they, if they're absolutely driven, and actually then they will make your workforce of tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. That investment piece is critical, mm. right? It's all very well going out, but if, we, if within, the, within an organisation, if you don't have that investment in terms of training and support and bringing them into the culture of your organisation, then actually it fails. So I think it's yeah, really critical. Okay. I definitely think education is, is key. And then I always say the customer for me is the teacher and the beneficiaries are the students. Mm. So if, if we are taking young people through a journey of kind of their, their education world and then through to their careers, how informed are those people that are carrying them through their journey, through whether that's in the classroom or whether that's engaging the parents? So how do we educate them to create that pathway and put those stepping stones down for them? And I think that education piece is, 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 is critical yeah. to it. Right, thanks. Joelle, we've got a question for you. That's come from Slido. She says, and then she can't see it again. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, so, Jarrell, what's something that could have helped you or supported you even more coming up in your career? Oh, um... <laughs> is the question I guess, sorry? That's okay. What's something that could have helped or supported you even more coming up in your career? Um, I feel like the support I've had has been very, very good, and um, I, I don't know what I could add to it. Um, I'm not sure. I've okay. gone blank. That's know. all right. That's okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can always come back to it if something comes to mind. Cool, yeah. Okay. So I'll ask, this is all for, for, for all four of you. I'll start with you, Carrie. Yeah. What's the one thing you would like the audience to take away from the session today? Oh, that's a great question. The, the change we want to see is possible, but it does need us to all work collectively to achieve those outcomes. Like we know that like, the proof is in the pudding. We've had so many amazing examples of how change can happen, but we all do need to, it's our, all of our individual responsibilities to make that change happen, but we've got to work together to achieve it. So yeah, I'd love you to all take that away. Get involved in, in the Academy Studios workshop. Come and talk to me about RISE. Come and talk to Conrad about how you can support his programs, how Jarrell, you know, his experiences can be replicated. I think there's so much that we individually can do as well as collectively. Okay, thanks. Con Conrad? As I was saying before, be brave. Be brave, yeah. Yeah, um, be innovative in 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 your recruitment, 
there are people out there that are beating down the door to come and be in a technology career, but they just go, they don't believe at the moment they can achieve it. Mm. So how do we, uh, how do we you know, impress upon them that they can? How do we uncover the skills that they've already got that they can then bring to the table and have a successful career in technology? Great, Nishi? Um, I'd say take people on the journey. Um, don't underestimate the impact that you can have from the smallest conversations to those bigger presentations that you have with people. I think being able to just ignite something in a young person's mind, whether that's just somebody that's just joined your company or your business or your team or your department, don't under underestimate how that might actually impact their career longer term. So even when I work with my team, who are actually here today in the audience <laughs> as well, um, when you speak to young people, there is that small nugget that you might leave with them and you may change the rest of their life. So don't underestimate your own powers. Lastly, Daryl. What's the one thing you'd want the audience to take away from the session? Um, your experience and your words? I think for me, I had to see it to believe it. So until I came to Sky and saw the campus and spoke to the people and saw the server rooms and all the different bits of technology, I didn't know it existed. So yeah, I think that's a big thing for people to see what's actually going on to really believe that they can do it or get into it. Great. Thank you. Thanks to the panel today. That was really insightful. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.